Succulents have successfully adapted to some of the harshest environments on the planet and grow where other plants fail. They have some incredibly cool and clever ways of surviving, but that is a topic for another video. The issue with growing succulents and many other plants these days is globalization. In our homes and gardens, we often grow plants that have evolved whole continents away. This can be challenging in certain climates and to successfully grow some of these plants, we will need to offer protections from the elements they are not used to. In some instances though, plants will acclimate to a certain point. Today we are going to have a look at what conditions succulents can acclimate to and their limits. Not all succulents have the same limits when it comes to cold and frost tolerance. The great majority are likely to suffer frostburn at very low frosts and may die when the frost settles. But succulents that will push through frost, deep freeze and even snow do exist. They are however few and far between. The interesting thing though is the variance in mild frost tolerance of succulents depending on where they are grown. It is possible to get succulents used to colder temperatures by slow exposure. There is a limit on how low you can go. Realistically, you are only looking at a very few degrees in plants that are already somewhat frost resistant, but even this can be very helpful. It is less likely you will be able to acclimate cultivars to even mild frost if they are not frost resistant in the first place in the short run. This kind of change usually happens over years and generations of plants, if that. Succulents are much more likely to adapt and acclimate to higher temperatures and sun exposure. Some desert succulents can withstand temperatures of about 60 degrees or 140 Fahrenheit. Heatwaves are becoming more prevalent around the world and even succulents can fall victim to them if the temperatures climb too high for too long. But it is very possible they are going to adapt and or regrow if they suffer during higher than normal temperatures. In my personal experience, many succulents can suffer the most if they are exposed to direct sun at high temperatures of over 35 degrees Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. Placing them in shade outdoors for the duration of the heatwave will help them adapt and survive in the great majority of cases. Putting a shade cloth overhead will also help greatly while maintaining the shape and color. But I also found that over time many will get used to this to a degree and the hardier cultivars will even tolerate the sun when this hot. All of the plants in my nursery live outdoors in summer with just 30% shade cloth overhead. I've grown over 400 different cultivars to date and all of them have lived through a 47 degree heat wave. But they have previously been exposed to temperatures of around 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit. To acclimate succulents that are not used to the sun or heat, they will need to be slowly exposed over a period of a couple of weeks. You can start by leaving them in a spot outdoors where they get early morning sun and gradually expose them to more and more every few days. Succulents have, for the most part, evolved in bright exposed spots with little shade from trees or shrubs, and they like to grow in a sunny spot. You can really see a difference between succulents grown in full sun versus shade. They can certainly acclimate to shade outdoors well enough to survive and grow, but they will not look the same as sun-grown succulents. Not all shade is created equal though, and shade outdoors is different to that of inside a house. Most succulents will struggle to adapt to shade indoors and they will very likely stretch, grow fewer, more spaced out leaves and eventually die after a few months. Shade tolerant succulents do exist and will survive better than the sun loving type such as Echeveria, but even they will need a bright window to grow well. Some of you may be able to grow any succulent indoors if you have a well lit sunny window or plant grow lights, but in most cases only the shade tolerant varieties tend to grow well enough indoors. I found that no amount of acclimatization will help sun-loving succulents adjust to a life in shade indoors permanently. Outdoors, yes, but not indoors, especially in darker corners of the house away from the windows. This is a tricky one as succulents have developed many water-saving features that allow for rapid water intake and also prevent water loss. 
Contrary to popular belief, most succulents come from semi-arid parts of the world where rain is somewhat regular but not frequent. While there are some true desert succulents, the majority do indeed rely on rainfall to survive. These adaptations succulents have developed may however present some issues when they are grown in wet and humid climates. I do believe that some succulents can adapt and there is also a bit of scientific research that shows the ability to switch some of the water saving features off. The link to the article discussing this is in the description. In short, it mentions that some succulents have been shown they can reverse their Crassulacean acid metabolism. I have a whole separate video discussing CAM. This adaptation allows succulents to exchange gases at night to avoid water loss. The exchange of the gases is part of photosynthesis and most plants do it during the day. It involves opening of the stomata, which are microscopic pores on the leaves. When they open during the day, a considerable amount of water can be lost, but at night, this water loss is minimal. If the water is plentiful, however, too much water can accumulate in the leaves, which can lead to plant disease such as, and apparently I've been pronouncing this wrong in the past, so it's edema, where cells can burst and die. Leaves can also burst open and they can die as a result along with the roots, which can then cause a whole new issue, rot. Rot is mostly caused by fungus as well as some soil dwelling bacteria. Many succulents seem to be particularly susceptible to rot in wetter environments. Other fungal disease such as powdery mildew or black spots seem to like settling on succulents as well. I couldn't find any research that would confirm succulents can acclimate to wet and humid climates in a way that would make them resistant to fungal disease. I don't believe this is possible. But I do believe it is possible for them to acclimate to wet and humid conditions in a way that allows them to release water more effectively and therefore minimizing root and leaf deaths. This is then likely to lead to less rot attacking the plants. I have a bit of anecdotal experience with this in my nursery, especially when it comes to cultivars in the Echeveria genus. I grow and propagate all of my succulents. They live outdoors even when it rains. In the past four years, we have been experiencing back-to-back -back wet weather and record-breaking rains. When this wet and humid period started, I've heard a few plants suffer quite a bit from edema and various fungal disease. But now, after four years, many of the same plants seem to have adapted and I hardly see any issues. For instance, I've had lots of problems with Echeveria lola at the beginning, but nowadays the new generations raised from those plants seem to deal with downpours and long-lasting rain. But not all have acclimatized this well. Although it's only a handful, I still have issues with some like Echeveria Black Prince, Black Knight, Romeo and some others. Still, it's just a handful. So there are likely limitations. Some cultivars may have trouble adapting while others will have very few problems. And then there may also be some that will need to go through a few generations exposed to those conditions. And that is all for today. I hope this video was useful. If you have anything else to add, you can do so in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.